band appearing tonight on Peter Jones, Margaret Powell, Michael Barrymore, Kate O'Mara, Bernie Winters, Lisa Goddard, and here's your host on Terry Wogan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You'll be spoiling me next. <laughs> and welcome to our homely but wholesome show. And indeed, our, our bunch of little-known celebrities. Nice being with you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Showbiz is really a really wonderful thing to be in. Now, look. These are the people that matter. These are two contestants. We'll yes, talk to you first, yes. John. Where are you from? I'm from Batley. And John what? John Taylor. Have you any family, John? Yes, I have two daughters. They'll presumably be looking in and cheering for yes, you. Yes, they will. So, so, Jane. Jane what? Jane Wheeler. Where are you from, Jane? Buckinghamshire. And you're, you're single or promised or...? No, I'm very single. Are you? <laughs> this is encouraging news, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Before we actually get on to the competition, in case you've been up the Hindu Kush or down a hole in the ground for the past six months, uh, quickly tell you that our contestants will pick A or B. I'll read out a sentence from which a vital blank is missing. I'll read it out to our celebrities. They'll write it down. And every time it matches the contestant's guess, then it's a point to the contestant. OK, now, before we start, I think you won the task, didn't you, John? Yes, I did. Good. OK, A or B? Um, it's not much of a choice. But no, it isn't. I'll have uh, A, please. Good, good. Nice start, John. Right. <laughs> Flo said, my husband, the safe cracker, is a safe cracker through and through. He even uses blank to open the refrigerator. You think about it, John. Everybody's looking reasonably alert. And so too you, John. And put on the lights as soon as you've got it. Yes. Bernie, Lisa, Kate, Peter, Margaret. Michael, Flo said, my husband, the safe cracker, is a safe cracker through and through. He even uses blank to open the refrigerator. I think uh, jelly, TNT, jelly. TNT, the jelly, mm. yes. You sound like a professional <laughs> explosive <laughs> expert. <laughs> TNT or the jelly, Peter? By the way, I'm married and from London. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dynamite, that'll do, TNT. Yes, that's a point same, to John. Same. Smart work, Peter. Thank you very much. Margaret Powell. Well, I thought anybody who's got a safe cracker for a husband would obviously not want to keep him long because there's no percentage in having a safe cracker, is there? Because he spends most of his time in prison. And then it's very difficult to have a good time when your husband's not around. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, just I... for someone like me, you of course, see. You... I mean, you know, other people, of course, have different ways of going up. <laughs> but you're true to one man, you see, Margaret. So, you're so unlike, right. Unlike so I many of us, like Peter Jones. I've had him 47 years. Really? I'm wondering, one is good, he's not as good as he was when I got him. But still. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to get back to the fact that I would want to get rid of a husband like that, I have put jelly nuts. The jelly, the jelly. Another point to you, John. <laughs> Michael Barrymore, a well-known face and too dashed good-looking for my liking, I can tell you. <laughs> Michael, nice to have you on the programme. Thank you, Bamba. Um, <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> it's the worst of being nice to them, you see. That's where I make my mistake. But all I could think of was Flora. Flo <laughs> He even uses flora to open the refrigerator. <laughs> well, not exactly right. Kate O'Mara, I believe you've signed up for the Bard. Yes, I have indeed. Yeah. I'm going to play Cleopatra. You don't want to be Mark Antony, do you? No, because I, I haven't got the figure for it, but... <laughs> but I'm sure you've got the legs. Uh, tell me about what you think. Well, um, I've sort of got two answers here, because I thought the first spelling was right, but I've given you an alternative one, because... Well, it's sort of the second one's common, but I've seen it in sort of comics. And jelly or jelly, yes, that will do. Do, won't it? Good, yes, that's three points to you, John. Mm. Hello, 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 After Joey. us, flushed from a successful series, they're not going to let you do another one, are they? Yes, I'm afraid so. Yes, yeah. yes. Bad uh, break I for am. all of us. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. That, thank you very much. <laughs> You're my lovely job as well. Yes. Yes, well, we're, oh, the question. The question, please, yes. Well, I put down gunpowder because I couldn't spell gelignite. <laughs> well, that's well, not I, I put spell that down. Gunpowder. That's gelignite in Hebrew. Another <laughs> <laughs> well, point to you, John. Okay, we move across to Lisa Goddard. You're doing a new series soon, too, aren't you? Yes, I am. What's yes. it called? 
It's more a pig in the middle. Yes, it's a, a homely... A family show, yes. It's about a man who has a wife and a mistress. Yes. Mm, well, you know. Who hasn't these days? Well, quite. <laughs> normal uh, story of family life. Anyway, to get back to the thing. Quite. Yes, I, um... I wrote... <laughs> Jelly Knight, did you? And it's cool. You spell it, too. Yes. Yeah. So, John, you get four points out of that. Four points for Jelly or TNT. It's something for you to shoot at, Jane. And we'll, uh, as usual, give you the wide choice of B. And I'll read that one out. Bernie Winters yes. answered the phone at three o'clock in the morning. And hearing heavy breathing, he turned to his wife, Ziggy, and said, It's <laughs> blank! <laughs> what? It's blank. It was when I woke up this morning. Very blank. <laughs> OK, lights on, please. Soon as you've got the answer. I'm nearly there. Yes, quite. <laughs> A small book has been written by Kate O'Mara there. <laughs> Margaret? She's copying me again. Good. I am not copying you. You started copying me. Peter Jones, have you slipped yeah. off into a reverie oh, yeah. again? No, sorry. Good. Big right, everybody's there. We turn to you, Jane, and I'll read it for you again. Bernie Winters answered the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning, and hearing heavy breathing, he turned to his wife, Siggy, and said, It's me! <laughs> it's the way you talk, isn't it? <laughs> no, I speak quite nicely, really. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <help> it. <laughs> Well, first I thought it was his Dulux dog, but I couldn't remember his name. No. So I said, I said, oh, so I said, never mind Mike. all that stuff. Mike, I said. It's Mike. I said. The brother. brother. You said it's the brother. <laughs> it's Mike. OK, Peter, moving speedily to your side. How is the after dinner speaking these days? Uh, oh, it's all right, you know. Yes, it's the dinners that are difficult. <laughs> um, well, I went through knowing a little about Bernie's personal life. I thought he might say, it's for you. <laughs> it's nice to be here and get these insults about <laughs> And I finally ended up with, it's a breather. Margaret Powell, you heard that loud and clear, didn't you? I could oh, see from yes, your alert expression. Well, I gave it a lot of thought. I thought being as Bernie Winters is such a nice, kind man, you know, and always having sweet thoughts, the kind of thing that he would like to discover at that hour of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. And I could see he would be delighted to... F Sorry, it's my mother-in-law. It's me mother-in-law. <laughs> You'd be pleased about that, would you? I don't think my mother-in-law would be too pleased. <laughs> Michael Barrymore. Uh, at first, I thought uh, it might be... He said, it's Superman. Do you think that's the right way to spell Superman? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got Mike on the other side, so that should help Jane. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got Mike Eamon and Andrew, so you get a point for Mike there, Jane. Mike, Michael Barrymore's a man who believes in having six shots at it. <laughs> Kate O'Mara. Yeah, you're not going to believe this, answer, I'm afraid. Um, you see, I thought that oh. um, Bernie might have been having a nightmare, and he might have thought that it was uh, somebody from another show. So he would have said, it's the raspberry blur of old London town. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> no, no. No, Kate, please. Well, I'm Irish too, you know, I can't help you. No, no. <laughs> None of us can. But he... I put Brother Michael. Brother Michael, that's another point to you, Jeff. Good. <laughs> Liza got I. Oh, yes, well, I thought, um, this business being what it is, I thought it was probably, he would say, it's my agent. <laughs> He could easily say that, but unfortunately, that, that's not what we're looking for. J.D. got two points that time, John got four. That means John's in the lead after round one, and we'll turn it around dexterously. And since you're lagging behind, Jane, I'll give you first shot this time. A or B? A, please. A it is. Right. The doctor said, Today, I treated the worst case of heartburn I ever saw. When the patient came into my office, Smoke was coming out of his blank. <laughs> <laughs> I should tell you, for this one, of course, Bernie is now playing, neither is Michael, because they both matched up with Jane in the previous round. So oh. save your energies. It's just Peter and Margaret, Kate and Lisa Liza. Today I treated the worst case of heartburn I ever saw. <laughs> when a patient came into my office, smoke was coming out of his blank. I'm not stone dead. <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> Good. All right. I'll turn to you again, Jane. You've got to catch up, do some catching up on this round. The doctor said, today I treated the worst case of heartburn I ever saw. When the patient came into my office, smoke was coming out of his... Shirt. Coming out of his shirt. I'll accept any variation on shirt. 
Peter Jones. Well, I eliminated his nose and mouth because he might have been smoking. And then I eliminated uh, other possibilities. <laughs> I came up with... Um, uh, yes. Ears. Ears. Coming out of his ears. Ears. We're still looking for shirt, Margaret. I discounted his nose and his ears, because anyone can make smoke come out of their nose and their ears. In fact, I nearly discounted him altogether, really. But finally, I decided if it was such an awful case as that, smoke must be coming out of his eyeballs. His eyeballs. <laughs> well, Michael, we miss you out this time. And move to Kate O'Mara. We're looking for a shirt case, really. Smoke coming yes. out of this... Well, I'm sorry. I, I contemplated shirt. several orifices and discarded yeah, them. I'm glad. And came up with ears. You ears see. seems to be a popular choice. <laughs> and stab me vitals if that doesn't mean John has won the game because there's no possibility of you catching up, I'm afraid, Jane. I'm going to ask you to join me, John, out here. We'll play a super match. <laughs> Jane, thank you for joining us, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy our little gift of our blankety-blank checkbook, meticulously chased in silver with a pen. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, John. As always, at the end of two rounds, we play our super match. Quickly fill you in. We ask a studio audience a blankety blank question, and we take their three most popular alternatives. And there they are in front of you 50 blanks, 100 blanks, 150 blanks. And these are the blankety blank prizes that go with them. <laughs> We'll pull back that first screen and see what you have to do, John. Mm -hmm. Nurse? Ah, it's Blank Garden, John. Blank Garden. You think about that. Now, you can call upon any three of our six celebrities to help you out find where that blank is. You don't have to take their advice or anything else. OK, let's have it. Who would you like to help you first? Uh, Peter, please. Um, what about uh, an English garden? An English garden. A worthy suggestion from Peter Jones. Margaret. Margaret Powell. Well, I would say a vegetable garden. An English garden, a vegetable garden. Who else? Mm -hmm. Who else to help you? Um, Kate. Kate O'Mara. Come into the garden. Come into the garden. Maud. No, never mind, Maud. <laughs> Come into the garden. OK, so those are the three suggestions you've got. What would you like to say? You can accept them or have one of your own. I think I'll say Rose. Rose Garden, very smart. Well done, John. Let's pull back the 50 blanks and see who's right. Winter Garden. Obviously, we had a crowd from Blackpool in. <laughs> For 100 blanks. <laughs> Covent Garden. I'm afraid they were geographically inclined. This could be it, though, John. Everything riding on this. Rose Garden. <laughs> You didn't get much help from our celebrities, but that's the idea, that they give you some alternatives and you come up with one of your own. You were right. Rose Garden, that means you carry off a TV radio cassette worth 150 blanks, and perhaps you come back and play the head to head. Thank you, John. As our team of highly trained midgets turn around the set, we come and meet two more contestants here. And uh, I'll chat to you first, sir. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew what? Leggett. Where are you from, Andrew? In Wells in Somerset. It sounds like a Scots name, though, is it? Uh, Scots it, antecedents. It, yes, it does come from Scotland. Right, well, we, I know you won't let Somerset down. Who's this on the other side of you? Is it Peggy? That's right, Peggy Smith. How are you, Peggy? Where are you from? From Enfield in Middlesex. No, right, it's Middlesex against Somerset. Now, uh, we did throw the coin up, and it disappeared up somebody's nose, as usual. <laughs> so, is A or B, Peggy? Which would you like? I'll have A, please. And so you shall, said the good fairy. <laughs> the doctor said, I've got a big television star for a patient, and he really loves himself, because after I give him his x-rays, he blanked them. 
You keep thinking, Peggy. You don't have to write it down, but, you know, if it's any help, by all means do. The doctor said, I've got a big television star for a patient. He really loves himself because after I gave him his x-rays, he blanked them. Big television star, what we do is x-rays. Trying to help Peggy. As soon as you've got an answer, light it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to go, Peter. Yes. Light on. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Light, yes. It's you, Peggy. I think he autographed them. He autographed them. That would be good. Yes. Right. This big television star, we do his x-ray plates. He autographed them, says Peggy. Yes, well, I had second thoughts, and I put enlarged, first of all, and then I put... Autographs! Can you quite get it on the thing? <laughs> Plan ahead. <laughs> Margaret Powell. Well, first I was going to, as you see, I was going to put duplicated them, but then I thought, no, he wouldn't do a thing like that. What would be the point? He's already got one lot. Yes. So I thought to think of something that he would do, being a big head, like, you know, most men are really, aren't they? You know? <laughs> uh, so I thought what he would do, he would frame them. Frame them, yes, yes, he would. <laughs> Michael Barrymore. She wears me out. <laughs> she wears me out, Margaret. Why do I do that? Well, I don't know. It's just you fascinate me, you see. Yeah. Wasn't well, that nice? Oh, wasn't that sweet? There's a show for this kind of thing. It's called Mr. and Mrs. And I wish you were right. Excuse me, Mr. Wonga, but when you get to my age, you have to get it where you can. That sounds like a, that sounds like a foul slur on Michael Barrington. OK, Michael, let's have I'm a Nicholas Parsons reject, you know. Right. Uh, well, Terry, um, I didn't... I thought at first um, that he would... Uh, eat them, and the only other thing I could think of was that he would sell them to his agent. So, <laughs> yes, well, that, that will show you the kind of person that we get on this show. <laughs> sell them to his agent. Kate O'Mara, we're still waiting for another point from Peggy. Yes, well, um, I don't know many big television stars. Well, at least I do now, but... Um, you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I must keep him with me. And so, um, I thought perhaps uh, he might have had them printed. Printed. Right. Now, it's funny, isn't it? Because, really and truthfully, I mean, people think I'm a dummy, and I'm here with... I just said to her, how can she look so pretty and be so stupid? You, know what I mean? <laughs> you see, I don't know. I know I can see what she's got there, and another one. You see, but, look, I've got autographs, oh, though. Right. Right. See? You see, Kevin? It's so true! Don't ask me how I spelt it. You must have looked there. Basically, it's all yeah. to ground. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to see you can spell them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa Goddard. Well, as he's such a big star, I thought he'd probably have a very large following. So he I. Has, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I thought yeah. he'd probably set them to his fans. <laughs> <laughs> You've got devious minds in the panel this week. That's two points to you, Peggy. Not bad, really, considering the kind of people we have in this week. <laughs> so it's. Your turn coming up, Andrew. Here we go. <laughs> Miss Winterbottom said, I don't think my boss appreciates comment. In the middle of the office, there's a blank with the word suggestions printed on it. As soon as you've got an answer, light up the little candle All in right. front of you. Good man, Bernie. Smart work, lad. <laughs> Margaret, there we go. Now, Andrew, you've got two to catch up, two triangles. You've got severial green circles that you've got to fill. Let me read it to you again. Miss Winterbottom said, I don't think my boss appreciates comment. In the middle of the office, there's a blank with the word suggestions printed on it. I would have said box. Box, would you? I would have said something a good deal more filthy than that. <laughs> but box it will be then. Box, says Andrew. Yes, well, I thought it must be a receptacle, but since he doesn't like comment, it wouldn't be a box, no, I didn't no, think, I you know. Have so, no. And I thought it could be that. A dustbin, yes. yes. <laughs> Waste paper bag, yeah. <laughs> Margaret Powell. I thought there it would be end up in pigeonholes. A pigeonhole. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Barrymore. Oh dear. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I'm doing it under the table. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the oh, you want an answer, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the answer that you want, uh, the first one I thought of was uh, half of what Margaret thought of, mm. without half the laugh. Yes. And that was whole. And eventually I decided it was a box. A box? <laughs> A strange logical process, but you got the right <laughs> answer. That's a point to you, Andrew. Uh, Kate O'Mara. Yes, well, um, <laughs> from what I've heard about bosses and secretaries and things, I naturally assume that no matter what the suggestions were, he'd want her in his in tray. And, well, that count as a box? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not only have I got it right, but I spelt it right. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Thank you, sir. Sir Bernie. Oh, Lisa, Liza. Yes, Lisa. Well, well, first, my first thought ah, well. was it would be um, a block of concrete. And I ah. thought probably a bit heavy and everything. And anyway, yeah. being a sort of good businessman, thing, I thought it was probably a safe, but they're both wrong. They're both wrong. <laughs> As you so shrewdly say, they're both wrong. That's two to Andrew, though. I, we'll go to round two, and in fact, it's level pegging. So, it was you that won the task, Peggy. We'll give you first choice this time, Andrew. I'll take A, please. Good. We've no way of knowing whether A is going to be more difficult than B or B more difficult than A. Why then do we divide them into A and B? Um, I don't know. <laughs> My neighbor loves to feed the birds these frosty mornings. I was amazed at dawn today to see him blankety blank with them. <coughs> My neighbor loves to feed the birds these frosty mornings, but I was amazed at dawn today to see him blankety blank with them. Now let me say straight away that there's two of you who don't play in this round. That's Bernie and Michael, because you both matched up with Andrew in the previous round. It's a new novel. <laughs> right. Well, don't think we aren't glad for that light going on. Okay. We'll turn smartly to you, Andrew. Now you've got some point. You level pegging, so you're still in the game with a, a, ch a shout. My neighbour loves to feed the birds these frosty mornings. I was amazed at dawn today, though, to see him blankety-blank with them. Having breakfast. Having breakfast. A good answer. Having breakfast with them. Right. Peter. Yes. Um, well, I thought he might conceivably be sitting in the trees with you? them. That would be amazing. It would be amazing, but it wouldn't be the answer no, that Andrew is looking for. No, no he, he wants them having breakfast with him. Yes. Or him having no, breakfast yes. with them. Or anything you like, really, Margaret. Oh, yes, you're waiting for me uh, now. Yes, this is, this is probably why I'm standing well, here, although... I, I'm not impolite, you see. I couldn't very well break in all the time you were giving us sides. I mean, if you're, if you're finished talking, then I will come in, you see. Me I... too. I'm getting more like George and Mildred every minute of the day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, which I can see you're waiting for me to do... For the do, first time this evening. Uh, but it's fly, trying to fly with you. Trying me. to fly with you. It's a very brave right. effort, Margaret, and <laughs> very long, too. <laughs> Kate O'Mara. Um, well, you see, I thought that as it was frosty and everything, and, and he was obviously a very nice man if he fed them, maybe he'd like to entertain them, so I thought he was playing snowballs with them. Playing snowballs? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I leave now? No, 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 please. Please, stay at least until the end. <laughs> Lisa. Oh, yes. Well, I thought oh. um, that this would be quite amazing, you see, if, if it was frosty. You have to understand, frosty. Of course, yes. <laughs> and this is it's amazing a frosty morning. He's bathing with them, but you see, it would yeah. all be frozen over. We're quite... Oh. <laughs> 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 Andrew, my sympathies are entirely with you. I thought having breakfast was a perfectly good answer. <laughs> Peggy, yes. you see the kind of thing you have to deal exactly. with now. Very well. So it's B for you this time, and obviously a chance for you to, to leap ahead of Andrew in round two. I can't get I... the top off. <laughs> I read in the Naughty Ash Bugle that Ken Dodd is becoming very fanciful areas and is planning to have a blank transplant. And bearing in mind that since two of you matched up with Peggy the last time, that was Peter and Bernie, it's just Margaret and Michael and Kate and Lisa. You ready, Margaret? Ken Dodd becoming very fancy, hilarious. He's planning to have a transplant. Right, we're ready. 
<laughs> and we turn again to you, Peggy. I think it's, doesn't he call it his tickling stick? He's planning to have a tickling stick Tick transplant. transplant. Very good. <laughs> I move smartly to you, Margaret. Oh. With more than a hint of panic in my breast. Oh, right. I'll be very quick about it. Oh. Um, I thought the, the thing that he really... You take as long as you want, love. Don't worry about it. You <laughs> Don't you start her off, for God's sake. He is intimidating Enjoy yourself. Yes. Inti That's what I said earlier. You Enjoy yourself. Go on, Margaret. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, go on, Margaret. Yes. Yes. I think yeah, I should go on straight. Yeah. I think Richard Baker has come to read the news. <laughs> he really would need, you know, when I last saw him, which was a little while ago now, was a hair transplant. A hair transplant at Kendog. I thought uh, at first maybe tooth, but I agreed with Margaret, as we agree on everything. A hair transplant. A hair transplant. Uh, well, I, I do hope you two are going to be uh, very happy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <to> Mrs Kojak. <laughs> Kate O'Mara, what can we do? What can we do for Peggy here? Well, Bernie says I, I don't deserve to be on this programme. I shouldn't be here. And he's right, because I've got hair that doesn't rise. Hair that doesn't rise. You even explained it. Yes. And jolly nicely, too. I like you. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, my first thought... I have two thoughts. My first thought was a jam butty transplant, and I thought that was no, silly. No. So I... Tickling stick! <laughs> Well, that means that you've won it, thanks to Lisa. Peggy, congratulations. Come out and join me here. We play the super match. <laughs>I, I know you didn't get much help. I hope you're not going to hold it against me. It's not my fault. No, certainly But we do hope that you'll enjoy our little memento of the occasion, which is a silver blankety blank checkbook and pen. Thank you for coming and joining us Thank on Blankety much. Blank. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Around it comes twirled by the DG's highly trained minions. And it's the super match. We know what that's about. Let's pull back the first screen and see what we have to shoot at. Ah, now Peggy, think keenly, as I know you will. Mm -hmm. It's Dr. Blank. Look across there and see the three people who are least likely to do you harm. <laughs> I shall choose Bernie. Okay, Bernie, fire away. Doctor? At large. At large. Good, it could be more than one word, of course. And I will have Peter. I wish you would. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Another good suggestion. And I will have Michael. Michael. Mm, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare. Right. We've got three alternatives. Do you accept any of them? I will accept Peter's and I will say Doctor Who. Okay. I think that's probably pretty shrewd. But I don't know any more than anybody else does. Let's pull back that 50 blanks <laughs> in the house, <laughs> which nobody suggested. For 100 blanks... Do little. We get some funny people in the studio audience. Now, it's all on this, Peggy. And Doctor Who is the correct answer. As you've seen that, I think you could probably thank poor old Peter. It encourages him, you know. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, one is enough. <laughs> one is enough. <laughs> oh, very well, then. Mm He'll -hmm. be the judge. OK, now, you've won 150 blanks, which means you've won the TV and radio cassette. However, in the first round supermatch, so too did John. So we're going to have to have a quick shootout between the pair of you before we get to the head-to-head. -head. So let's bring John back on. <laughs> Well, John, you sit down there, Peggy, please, if you will. Now, what we're going to do this time is I'm going to move speedily, my little legs whirring as I go. This is the first time, he said, taking two questions out instead of one. This is jolly thrilling, isn't it? Now, the thing is, for the, the only time when we play Blankety Blank, we ask the contestants to write down the answers to this. I'll read you out a Blankety Blank question. It's a chance for you to take part in the head-to-head. 
and then I shall move amongst the celebrities and ask them what they think the answer is. If it corresponds with your answer as written down, hand in the air, please. Making a simple gesture. <laughs> Lorraine said, I'm never going to that marriage counsellor again. He told me to mend me broken heart with blank. <laughs> our contestants write it down. The once keen brains of our celebrities clank into action. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Good You're good. ready. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank you. Here we go then. Here we go. Good luck. Right. Moving across <laughs> to Peter Jones. Um, it's uh, anybody's guess, isn't it? It is uh, indeed. Let's hope so. Gin. Gin? He told me to mend me broken heart with gin. <laughs> no, I didn't think that'd get much of a response. <laughs> Margaret Powell. Sellotape. Sellotape. Yeah. That's a thrilling tie break. Congratulations to you, and of course you must thank Margaret for that, John. Mm -hmm. Peggy, as a matter of interest, you had the name of some other proprietary I band, did, yes. have you? Of Stick. <laughs> That's jolly hard luck, but you're not going away empty-handed, Peggy, because you've got the radio and TV cassette worth 150 blanks. Congratulations. Come on out here, John. We'll play the head-to-head. All right, John, for our head-to-head, -head, you've won a TV and radio cassette, just as Peggy has, but you can go on. We'll allow you to keep that, of course. We're not going to take it away from you at this stage. This is a chance to double it. You can win a sound movie camera and projector and screen worth 300 blanks. You've still got the original 150 blanks worth of prize. I'm going to read out this to you. You think about it, but you've got to pick one of our celebrities to play with or against, however you look on it. Who have you picked? Margaret, please. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Must use Margaret. Must you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around and face me. Turn around and face me. Now, what I'm going to do is read this out to you. And Margaret, I want you to write down what you think the blank is. Here we go, for the head to head. Tuning blank. Tuning blank. Think tuning blank. Margaret, tuning blank. Okay, here we go. For doubling those 150 blanks. Tuning. Tuning fork. Tuning fork. Fork. Tuning fork it is. So you owe it all to Margaret, and it's up to you what you or how you reward her later on. I'll see Margaret later. Yes. Right. And good luck to you. <laughs> Tuning fork, that means you've carried off the sound movie camera and screen and projector, which I think is a smashing prize. You've been a terrific contestant. Thank you, very Thank you John. Much. Thank you to all who took part. That's Peter and Margaret and Michael and Kate and Bernie and Lisa, and to you for joining us. And I hope you'll make it again next week, the same time, for another edition of Blankety Blank. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.